In this video, we are taking a look at the forecast for Super Bowl 56, not only just around the stadium, but around the whole country as many could be dealing with snow and rare winter heat waves. Beyond that, we are dissecting the medium range pattern as it looks like we are about to undergo a major shift. What does that mean for you? Well, we're about to find out. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. The forecast models are doing that thing again where they don't agree with each other and every single one has a different outcome for this weekend storm. So it's time we roll up our sleeves and do some meteorology here as we get into the nitty gritty of the forecast. All right, starting off here, looking at the whole country on the NAM three kilometer model. This is gonna give us an idea of what the radar could look like as we go into the future. And we're pretty sure about this. So if you wanna keep up with the date and time, it's always above my head there in Eastern time. Look at this, around noon, our clipper is bringing down some snow into Minnesota and some rain all the way down into Nebraska as that cold front does trail in. And look at that clipper, man. You can literally see it rotating here. This is gonna bring some gusty winds into Wisconsin in the UP of Michigan and even, you know, some decent snow. It's not a blizzard or anything. It's not going to be a huge snowstorm, but some decent additional snow even all the way into uh, the oven mitt there of Michigan, okay? And you can see very clearly these little bands that trail behind it. This represents the cold air that is slamming down from Canada. Ontario and Montreal and you guys, you can expect some snow out of this, but the Northeast, I think you're going to be pretty dry as far as snow goes, at least when it comes to this clipper. Now, here's where things get interesting, okay? This, this cold front is still trailing down. We still have a big old bucket of cold air coming down from Canada. Thank you, Canada. We always appreciate the cold air. Uh, if we have a piece of energy down here, if there's something that can interact with that cold air, uh, that's going to allow for, you know, a storm to form and possibly go up the East Coast. But all the way out here at 1 p.m. on Saturday, we still can't see any major signs of a big storm forming on the simulated radar. But as you guys know, there's more going on here than what you can see on this surface map. The radar and the precipitation type is just a small part of the equation. We have to look at the upper levels of the atmosphere. We have to open the hood and look from the top down to really dissect what's going on here. So let's do that now. All right, switching over to the GFS now and looking at our swirly things. This is that energy down here in the Gulf of Mexico that the storm could possibly work with. And this is the wave that is causing our cold air to come down, okay? What happens up here controls what happens down on the ground. And as you can see, we got a trough here. You guys remember, we refer to these things as baseball bats. And what you wanna see is for that baseball bat to swing and then eventually make a negative negative tilt. Now, if you don't want snow, you want this thing to just completely dissipate or you want it to stay positively tilted as it goes off to the east. So let's see what actually happens here. And uh, okay, so this is a baseball swing. Okay, we do eventually get uh, uh, at least a neutral tilt in our trough and it does eventually go negative, but we have to zoom out to really see that happen and, and look how weak it is. So the GFS has a baseball swing. It has snow, okay? It has snow for some people, but it's not a big snowstorm. This is not a home run. Okay, so there's more than one model. This is the European. What is going on here? Once again, we got a short wave coming through. It's interacting with our southern energy. We've got a ridge in the west. All of the ingredients are there, but the euro also kind of disconnects those pieces of energy a little bit more and sends everything through really progressively and we don't get that real negative tilt until it's too late and also at the time that it happens everything becomes uh, much weaker here so once again there's a swing here uh, and actually the swings a little bit stronger on the euro but it's more of a miss okay like if it would have hit it would have been a home run uh, but it didn't I hope these baseball analogies make sense <laughs> well here's a look at the precipitation type map on the euro okay you can see all the cold air that's coming down here thanks to our trough and you can see that energy kind of interact with that southern stream a little bit more and we start to see precipitation in Virginia through the Delmarva area into southern Jersey, maybe all the way out there in Cape Cod. And once again, you know, everything just happens too late. We hit that negative tilt, we get more lift, we get more power, we get more everything, but it happens way out here out to sea. If we look at the GFS, same thing, big trough, energy to the south, they combine, uh, and we get a little bit more snow this time. This is showing, uh, you know, heavy snow there in North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, and then once again, up through the Delmarva into Long Island and Cape Cod. Uh, and, you know, it shows the same thing where the storm really starts to get its act together over here way off the east coast, but the precipitation shield throws more uh, snow on areas like Rhode Island and Cape Cod. Once again, not a blizzard. We are going to keep a very close eye on this today because the model runs that come out later today are going to be very important. So if you're hoping for that snowstorm, stay tuned, okay? There's still hope, but at the same time, it does look like maybe the most interesting thing that's going to be happening this weekend is that little football game they play over here. That's right. On Sunday, it's game time. And speaking of the big game, I got to talk about today's sponsor. 
sponsor, DraftKings Daily Sports for Cash. You can win cash your way at DraftKings Sportsbook, which is a safe and secure online sports betting platform. That's right, you can actually bet just five bucks on either team to win the big game, and DraftKings is going to give new customers an additional two hundred and eighty dollars in free bets if your team wins. And if Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you still have something to play for this weekend. Everyone can play for their share of millions of dollars in prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Football Contests. They are the best when it comes to fantasy sports and they add new contests every single day. I'm going to give it a shot and if you want to as well, go ahead and hit that link down there in the description. Hit that link in the description to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code Ryan Hall and get 56 to 1 odds on either team to win the big game. Once again, bet just $5 and they're going to give you $280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code Ryan Hall at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be found down there in the description. Please play responsibly and let's get back into the video. All right, let's do a quick Super Bowl forecast down here. How many people do we have in the comments that are actually going to be going to this? I'll be watching from home, but if you do go down there, okay, this is what we can expect around the SoFi Stadium uh, around game time on Sunday, okay? So early in the morning, temperatures are going to be in the 40s and 50s. You know, it's kind of typical down here, but later in the day, things are going to get extremely warm, okay? Uh, Euro is showing uh, mid to upper 80s uh, in and around Los Angeles, and really all up and down the West Coast, we're going to be warm, like, you know, unseasonably warm for this time of year. Once again, 4 p.m., we are in the 80s, and some models are showing in the 90s uh, for a lot of places that are usually nowhere near that this time of year. As you can see, if we look at our temperature anomalies, some people are 25 degrees above normal here. So it is going to be hot out there if you're going to the big game in person down here in Southern California. The good news is, is the dew point is going to be incredibly low. So it's not going to be very humid. It's not going to be like that sticky kind of hot. It's going to be hot and dry, which could cause some wildfire problems too, because those uh, winds are going to be cranking up a little bit. But yeah, main story here is that the vast majority of everybody in the West is uh, going to be much above average during this time period, especially the further south and west you go. In fact, the National Weather Service has put out a heat advisory down here, which once again is really odd to see in February, a heat advisory. But from now until 6 p.m. Sunday, we're expecting 80 to 90 degree temperatures down here in a lot of the greater Los Angeles area. Drink plenty of water. Uh, use caution when working. Never leave children or pets in the cars, obviously. Wear sunscreen and lightweight clothing and take frequent breaks in the shade, okay? So obviously uh, the weather service down here is expecting that there's going to be a lot of out-of-towners in the area. Some people may be genuinely surprised that it's 90 degrees down here. So uh, yeah, so just keep that in mind. Also, there's a wind advisory for gusts up to 50 to 60 miles an hour. All right, so after we get this storm out of here, it's going to skedaddle. It'll be out of our hair, I don't know, about early in the morning on Monday, maybe midday, depending on the exact track changes. But after we get past that, we're going to see another brief period of very quiet weather here with cold in the northeast and warm air advection down here in the southwest. But things start to change around the middle of next week. You see that thing coming? You think you see it sneaking in over there? Here we go. Wow. GFS shows a massive storm forming in the middle of the country, uh, you know, towards Wednesday and Thursday of next week week. But I mean, that's the GFS. I'm sure the Canadian doesn't show it. Listen, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on something. I ain't listening to nothing unless the Euro shows it too. Okay, like, look, I ain't seeing no. Oh, okay. All of the three big forecast models are showing a uh, very consistent looking uh, big storm here around Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So let's talk about that. So once again, this is the pattern we've been in, right? Colder and stormier on the East Coast and then the central areas, warmer and drier in the West. This has been the story of the winter so far, pretty much across the U.S. And seemingly nothing can change that. Nothing's gonna budge anything Oop, except for this bowling ball that comes in here and just literally crashes our weather pattern uh, and really disrupt stuff. Look at this, on Thursday, when that big storm's coming through, now we've got a big change, okay? We got a ridge in the east. We've got this huge trough down here in the uh, south and west. Let's look at those mid-level winds, and look at that. That's our bowling ball coming down and really, really opening the gates here. Everybody inside of that ridge is going to be inside of a very warm, moist bubble uh, as we go forward. And the upper air synoptic pattern, I, I believe this is exactly what's going to happen. We are going to see a ridge over here. We are going to see a trough. Uh, but how intense is the trough? Okay, how warm is the air over here? How cold is the air behind it? That's the little stuff that we still have to figure out as we go forward. And the little stuff matters because 
This is going to be, if this continues to show, you know, a big storm, this is going to be a, possibly our first significant severe weather potential that we've had in a while. Okay, so this is our 500 millibar trough. Let's go down to 850 millibars. This is that lower level jet streak. And once again, how long has it been since we've looked at this? Okay, we have nadir juice in the air. So this is something that we have to watch extremely closely. And how about that moisture? A big plume of it comes in and possibly sparks off some storms on, you know, early in the morning on Thursday around Dallas and Oklahoma city and then that might really amplify and form into a strong line of storms later in the day only to continue further into friday and possibly create severe weather again uh, in the deep south so everybody down here uh, and possibly even a little bit further north than that as well i mean because things can change a little bit uh, but everybody needs to start thinking about okay we're getting into that time of year where i have to think about tornadoes and hail and damaging winds and stuff again one of the things that we might be missing is some cape okay so this is convective available potential energy this is the uh, fuel in the atmosphere that allows for storms to form and there's really not a lot of it here but uh, you know, some of these places, especially the further south you go, are getting close to 1,000 to 1,500 joules per kilogram of CAPE, which is more than enough to spark a thunderstorm. If you want to look more at timing and placement, we can kind of look at that instantaneous flash rate and see where those storms might be popping up. Remember, don't pay too close of attention to the exact placement here. This is going to change. But you can see that those storms are popping up widespread in the south and then once again in the deep south as we go forward and as that cold front progresses. And then, of course, on the northern side, we have to worry about snow and ice up here, possibly from Colorado into Kansas, Iowa, Wisconsin, up there into Michigan as well. Uh, you know, that's going to change a lot, too. But we have to watch this very closely as we go forward. And, you know, I'm going to if you watched the last video, I literally talked about this exact thing happening where uh, we were going to have a couple more shots of storms over here and then we're going to start seeing the storms over here and then maybe even over here so here you go that's our second phase of our pattern shift that we're getting ready to go through and it could be messy for a lot of us all right huge shout out once again to our members over there love all you guys also huge shout out to you okay maybe you can't be a member maybe all you can do is like that video right now and hit the subscribe button hey that's good enough for me tons of contents going up on our other channels i've got a shorts channel and a clips channel make sure you subscribe to those if you want to see more stuff from me and then of course follow Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that good stuff, okay? I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.